um, I curated my first exhibition for, um, it's called Contours, Five Independent Visions, and it's based on five artists, individual representations of the human form. Um, they all graduated from New York Academy of Fine Art, and that's how I know them. Um, and I sort of spent the past two years watching their work evolve, and I, it was really easy for me to kind of create this transition and dialogue between all of them. And I think that it's really important to look at the human figure and see how such an important subject throughout, throughout the subject of art history has been has, is influenced within today's cultural domain. And what was the criteria that you used to select these particular artists? To be honest with you, it was more of a dialogue with them. We sat down, we talked about it, and then that was kind of it. I had the original idea for this project was it was going to be a photography exhibition. And I've always been really interested in the process of photography, but it was just not enough to go off of to create something of this caliber really for me anyway in terms of something that was something that was going to be as self-satisfying for my own individual like, um, my own individual like want for the knowledge of being able to see how all of their work relates to each other um, and I felt like working with a one person wasn't really curating but working with five really is and working with the five artists has been a really interesting experience. I would never trade it for anything, especially for my first show. I think it'll be, I think it'll only go up from here. Um, but it's, it's. I mean, I walked out of the gallery last night and basically everything was hung and it was the most surreal experience I've ever had. So it was really, really great. <laughs> now, um, did they select the work or did you? I selected it. Did they submit a certain number and then you whittled it down, or we, how did that work? When we got the space, it was kind of like, all right, the space is small, we're going to work with what we have, and we really, only, we didn't really have to cut that much work out, and we used the catalog as an opportunity to show work um, that wasn't, that isn't hung on the walls, um, so people can walk away with that catalog, it's free, and hopefully they'll look at the website, and they'll go, and they'll look the artists up, and it's a good opportunity for them to be seen, too. Um, but they created new work, which was not a criteria at all. When I said I want to do the show, um, it wasn't it wasn't uh, required for them to make new work, but they did, so which was great because everyone was so excited about it, which just made it even better. So. And how did you select this particular space? Um, I was looking at renting pop-up retail spaces, but those are very, very expensive. If you're looking to curate your a show, pop-up show, you're looking at like $9,000 a week. Um, but Thomas Werner works for Parsons, and he was doing some advising with me, and he didn't really offer me his space in the beginning when I was like just pitching the one artist. But when I pitched the entire, like this idea, he was totally on board. He's like, I love your idea. I want to, I want you to use my space. So, um, so we worked it out and he's been really helpful. He came in and did the, did the lighting with us and gave me some really good pointers. And, and I think he saw something in my idea and in the work that was young and, and innovative. And I think he really kind of believed in us, which was great. Because if he didn't, we wouldn't have this. So, yeah. And what was your greatest fear going in? Um, that people wouldn't come. <laughs> but no, I mean, I didn't. Not only are they my artists, but they're my friends. And I didn't ever think that they would let me down. I, I have to say, I didn't really have that many big fears. It was like little things, like something wouldn't come in in time. You know, I would I would be too nitpicky and I wouldn't be happy. But I mean, I think overall, like I couldn't think of it as such a big project because if I did, it would completely overwhelm me. And I didn't. I just took it day by day, and we all did. Especially these past five days, we started moving in on Sunday. Um, we we just took it. We came in the space. We painted. We rented the U-Haul. We moved. And then we left and we didn't talk to each other for like six hours and then we came back and we installed and and then we weren't done so we installed again and it was it's 
I couldn't have asked for working with better people. Um, so that's been great. Yeah. Now, did you foot the bill for this yourself? Did you get funding from the school? Or I was ready work? to foot the bill for it myself um, because this has been something that I've been thinking of doing for almost two years. But it got to the point where I just couldn't, and I did. I got funding from the new school. So they have a wonderful budget for students who have independent products that they want to do. And you go and you pitch to a group of students, which is so nice because you're not pitching to a board which is thinking about like other budgeting you know, criteria. You're pitching to students who can relate to what you're doing. And they passed it and it's been, it was a godsend. So. so tell us a little bit about the inspiration. Um, what makes this different in terms of... Uh, human form? Um, the inspiration kind of stemmed from my background as a ballerina. I took ballet class when I was little and so did Lauren Woods and that's how we met and actually that's how I was introduced to all the other artists. But um, I mean I really, I've always been interested in how the figure has transformed over time and especially in our cultural society when we're looking at magazines and supermodels and we're really only looking at we're looking at the figure in, on television and, and on reality TV. But you forget sometimes I feel like people forget that how important the figure is in terms of art. And that's where it really came from. Like the ideal came from the Greeks and Romans. And that's where Miles Yoshida's work is the anchor for this, because I feel like everything else is a spiral around that. Um, and in this room, I mean, with these 14 works and these two sculptures, it's, it really takes you from the beginning to where we are today. And I think that's, with kids that are this young, I think it's great. What's the age range? Um, well, I'm 21, and the oldest artist is 35. So you're an artist yourself? Well, I don't create my own work, but um, as a curator, I kind of consider myself part of the group. But I. In terms of just the five artists, it's 26 to 36, so a 10, 10 year gap. So you're not a painter or a sculptor? No, I grew up um, with two parents who are artists, a graphic designer, and my mom writes and illustrates children's books. So I would well, willingly admit that I tried my hand at fine art and failed. So I have um, a real appreciation for what they do because I know how hard it is. And they were painting in the gallery today, like just touching up their paintings. I was like, I want to do that. It looks so great. I just, I want to sit there and I want to paint. But so I mean, what was the criteria that, that made you think you failed? Oh, failed? I don't think I failed. No, you said that you, fit, you, you try fine art and you failed. Oh, um, I mean, I, I have a very high standard for my own degree of work. And it just wasn't satisfying for me. I, I wasn't, I was disappointing myself, and I was starting to lose the love of the history of art that I had because I couldn't produce my own. So I decided to just put it to bed and really embrace what I loved about it, which was the history and how it was created and the ideas and the, the knowledge and the mindset behind it. So. What advice would you give to other first time curators? Pick your artist wisely. <laughs> um, and in terms of the work or the personalities? I would say just make sure that you, you know exactly, like if you're working with a group of artists, regardless of if you know, like, you know them or not, you have to be ready to micromanage each one of them. And you really have to be able to put your foot down on what you, your vision is versus what their vision is. And as much as you don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, like it's not it's about the general the general picture. And it's that you really learn a lot about yourself when you see your own vision and other visions are coming in on the sides. And you have to you really have to push those away in order to make something produce itself. Um, and the other thing that I would say is no matter how small your space is, you can make it work. That's it's it's it, you can always make it work. So. And what's next for Christina Tafuri? Um, I'm going to grad school at NYU um, to get my master's in visual arts administration with a concentration in for-profits.